UK. <laughs> Now, the Pentagon has confirmed that the Biden administration is planning to send a missile defense system to Israel to protect against any Iranian threats, and American troops will be deployed to operate the system, system known as THAAD. Let's go live now to uh, Mike Hanna, who's in Washington. Uh, so, Mike, I mean, the Pentagon shedding further light on reports initially made in the U.S. media. What more do we know? Yes, there's been a series of reports in recent days that this is being contemplated and now it's being confirmed by the Pentagon uh, that a THAAD missile system will be sent to Israel. Now, THAAD stands for Terminal High uh, Altitude Area Defense System. It's a kinetic system in terms of which there are no uh, explosives on the uh, defendant missiles. They use kinetic energy to destroy the incoming missiles. But it's got a far greater range than the Patriot systems that are, have already been deployed by the Pentagon or indeed the Iron Dome defense system that the Israelis designed. So it is a step up. The important point, too, is that these systems are so complex that it requires a crew of 94 to operate and trained crew of 94, and these will be U.S. soldiers. So you will possibly have U.S. soldiers on Israel soil as the uh, this crisis continues. Uh, now, the, just, the system was deployed before. It was deployed in 2018 to Israel for a training exercise. And shortly after the October attacks last year, uh, the president ordered the deployment of such a missile system to the region at an undisclosed location. So this is a system being put in place, and it is a significant step up of the U.S. support for Israel as this crisis continues. Yeah, definitely turning up the heat on a region already on edge. Mike Hanna, many thanks to that. Mike Hanna in Washington, D.C. It's the deadliest drone attack Hezbollah has carried out against Israel in over a year. Its target, a military base in the northern city of Benyamina that sits between Tel Aviv and the port city of Haifa. Dozens of ambulances and military helicopters were seen evacuating the injured from the army base. 36 injured people arrived. Six are in serious conditions. Some of the injured are currently undergoing surgery in the operating room. Some were treated in the emergency room and have been transferred to departments for further observation. Images shared on social media show the dining hall at the military facility with damage to the ceiling. Others show a trail of blood in a corridor. Hezbollah has claimed responsibility for the attack. The Lebanese group says it launched a squadron of drones targeting the Israeli army's Golani Brigade 
an elite army unit that's been at the forefront of Israel's wars in Gaza, the occupied West Bank, and Lebanon. And now, questions among the Israeli security establishment as to how this drone went undetected and bypassed all air defense sensors. Advantage of using drones is that they are very small, they fly very low. Uh, they're not detected by systems that are designed for rockets or missiles, such as Iron Dome or Patriot or Arrow. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit of a surprise to me that we haven't seen this sort of thing before. The attack came hours after Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant entered the Lebanese territory on Sunday, saying Israel will never allow Hezbollah to reestablish its presence along the border and will continue to attack all across Lebanon until that goal is achieved. Hamdas al Hout, Al Jazeera. Tensions in the Middle East are ramping up as Israel finalizes plans for a counterstrike against Iran, and it's expected to happen before the U.S. election, according to a CNN report. The retaliatory strike comes in response to Iran's massive ballistic missile attack on Israel earlier this month. While Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is closely monitoring U.S. politics, officials claim the military response won't be tied to the upcoming election on November 5th. However, the timing could push the conflict to the forefront for American voters. Netanyahu assured President Biden that the Israeli Defense Forces will limit their strike to military targets, steering clear of oil refineries or nuclear sites. That's in line with the Biden administration's concerns. Washington has warned that hitting those locations could trigger an all-out war across the region. Israel is under pressure from neighboring Middle Eastern countries, too, as they fear targeting Iran's oil fields could lead to surging oil prices, something that could complicate Vice President Kamala Harris's election bid, as higher gas prices tend to reflect poorly on the party in power. Meanwhile, the humanitarian crisis in Gaza is becoming a hot-button issue among young Democratic voters. According to the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry, Around 42,000 Palestinians have died over the past year. However, the numbers don't distinguish between civilians and militants, fueling the political debate. With mounting pressure from within the Democratic Party, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin recently penned a letter warning that U.S. military aid to Israel could be paused if humanitarian aid to Gaza isn't increased. But notably, neither President Biden nor Vice President Harris signed that letter.